in this activity, we're going to construct what's called an angle bisector. So an angle bisector, um, starting up here, it's a line, ray, or segment that passes through the vertex of an angle and divides the angle into two congruent angles. So it takes a bigger angle and it kind of like cuts it in half and it needs to be perfectly in half. Um, so to do this project, you'll scroll down from this like completion page, construction project to angle bisector. And you're going to go down to where it says construct or technology construction, construct an angle bisector. And then you'll click the plus to open it up. And then this is where we're going to create the angle bisector. So step one, um, choose the ray tool and then click on the white space on the screen. Um, then click again another location, you should see the ray. And by the way, actually before I go any further, all these instructions that are on the left side are just down here below like the workspace. Um, I just keep them on the left side, just screenshots of them to avoid having to scroll back and forth. Okay, so um, we're gonna create a ray. So we'll click the ray tool, that's the second button up at the top. And then I'm gonna click anywhere on my screen and then click somewhere else on my screen. And then now I have a ray and it continues on like forever in the upper right direction. And then the second part of step one says show slash hide or choose the show slash hide label tool. And then click on the initial point and the second point to label them. So the show and hide label button is this one, like the double A button at the top. So we'll click on the first point from our ray, that like kind of end point, and then the second point as well. Um, and so now I have ray A, B. And then that's all we need to do for step one. For step two, uh, draw the other side of the angle by choosing ray again. First click on point A and then click again another location. So again, ray button is the second one at the top. We'll click on point A and then I'll just click somewhere else to create my angle now. And then I want to get a label for this point. So to do that, that's the second part of step two. I'll click on the show slash hide label button up here, the double A. And then I'll go down and I'll click on that point and it'll give me point C and then ray A, C. For step three, um, it says you need to construct a circle that has a center at the vertex point A. So to do that, we'll choose a circle with center through point tool and then click on uh, the vertex point A and then click um, between points A and C on ray AC. Um, so that button is the fourth one at the top, the like black circle. So circle with center through point. So we click on that and then we click on point A and then we click somewhere on ray AC between point A and point C. So it doesn't have to be like perfectly in the middle, but it's, it should be like somewhere between those two points. And then next we want to get the intersection point where our new circle intersects with um, ray AB, so like around right here. So we choose the intersect tool. That's like the little kind of X button at the top, the third one at the top. And then we'll click anywhere on circle A. And then we click anywhere on ray AB. I'm gonna click right here. And then that intersection point popped up. Notice I didn't click like directly on the intersection point, I just clicked somewhere else on circle A and somewhere else on array AB. And then I wanna get um, the label for those points. So um, it says next, choose and the show slash hide label tool and click on both the intersection points you just drew and now we'll have points D and E. Um, so show slash hide label, uh, it only really matters which one we click first. I'm going to just do them in the order that I got those points. So I'll click right here for point D and then right here for point E. Step four, um, draw two congruent circles at the points D and E. These circles will intersect at two points. So to do that, we'll choose the compass tool. So that's the red circle at the top, the fifth button. Um, and then we'll click on point A and then click on point D. That's gonna copy circle A. And then we'll click on point D to center the new circle around point D. So we click on point A and then we click on point D and that creates like a copycat circle. And then I'm gonna click one more time on point D because I want my new circle to be centered around point D. And then I'm gonna do pretty much that same exact thing except I'm gonna create a circle that's centered around point E now. So still use the compass tool. And then I click on point A. I click on point E, that creates my like copycat circle. And then I'm gonna click one more time on point E because um, that'll center it around that point. And then 
last little thing on this note is that now like circle A and circle E and circle D, those are all congruent circles. They were all created kind of based off the size of circle A. So next choose the intersect tool and then click on circles D and E. We wanna get their intersection points. So intersect tool is the third button at the top. I'm gonna click somewhere on my circle D down here, somewhere on my circle E up here. And then now I have their intersection points. Well, A was one of them. And then now there's another point over here. And it looks like we're gonna end up adding another label point for that other intersection point. So last part of step four, um, choose the show slash hide label tool and then click on the new unlabeled intersection point. So the intersection point um, should be labeled point F. So um, I'm gonna click on the show slash hide label button. And then, so again, the double A at the top and then I'm gonna click on this new intersection point right here. And it's funny, it's in the directions even. Um, okay, so the directions said uh, that it, this intersection should be labeled as point F um, if it's named G instead, like mine is. Um, keep going as if it was named F. So um, once we click on this point, there should be an F or a G. Um, I'll refer to it as like both throughout the rest of the video, um, but that's the point that we needed to get. And then, um, we actually don't need to add another label here. The other intersection point is just at point A. Okay, so moving down to step five. Um, in this step, you need to draw a ray through points A and F slash G. Um, so to do that, we'll choose the ray tool, which is the second button at the top. And then we'll click on point A, and then we'll click on point F slash G. And then that'll set the ray that goes through those two points. So the ray AF, that one we just created, should be the bisector of angle A, that original angle we created. And now there are two angles, um, F slash G, A, C, and then B, A, F slash G, depending on what you have. Okay, step six to verify that um, ray AF bisects angle A. We wanna measure angles F or G, A, C, and B, A, F or G. <laughs> um, so uh, choose the angle tool and then click on those points. So the angle tool is, what is that? The sixth button at the top, the one that looks like a little mini angle. Um, so we're gonna do, click on first point F slash G, and then click on point A, and then click on point C. So if that happens where you get a really big angle measurement and it's going like around the outside of the angle, um, we just need to redo that step and you need to click on them in the reverse order. So you'll click undo up here in the upper right. And then I just did like G, A, C. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click those same points, but I'm gonna go in a different order. I'm gonna go C, A, G slash F. And then now I have that little like 22 degrees. You should have a smaller angle. You shouldn't have something over 180 degrees because we just want this little like internal angle here as opposed to the other one that was like over 300 was like all the way around. Okay, so that's that angle. And then now we just need to check for the other angle up here. And again, we're trying to see if like ray A, G or A, F is a bisector. So we want these two like smaller angles that are inside the bigger angle to be exactly the same. So we just need to check the second one. So choose angle tool again, um, and then click on the points uh, B, A, and then G slash F. Uh, mine did it again where it was like on the wrong side. It's on like on the external side of the angle. So if that's happening to you, no big deal. Um, you'll just click undo, which is in the upper right. And then you'll click those three points again, you'll just um, change the order. So instead of B, A, G, or F, you'll click G or F, and then you'll click A, and then you'll click B. And these are kind of like smushed in there together. Um, they both ended up being a 22.45 degrees. We might be able to move them. Yeah, so if you click the move tool, like the first button at the top, you can click the little um, angle measurements and drag them just so they're a little bit more visual. Um, and yours may not be um, 22.45, it could be a, like a different angle, 
But the thing is, they should be the same as each other. So they don't need to be the same as mine. They just need to be the same as each other. And then now we just want to check to see if, like, they stay the same no matter how we kind of, like, move this angle. So next, um, choose the Move tool and check to see if you create an angle bisector. So click and drag either points B or C. If the two angles you created by the angle bisector maintain the same measurement, then we've done it correctly. So we're going to click the Move tool. It's the first button at the top. And then um, either you can click on point B or point C. And what we're looking for here is that if I move these, do the angles stay the same as each other? So their measurements are moving, but are they like twin angles? Are they staying exactly the same as each other? Um, you can see they're kind of getting a little messed up because I moved them so they didn't stay like inside the angle. But no matter how I move C, those two angle measurements are matching each other. And then same thing with B. So that's what we want. We just want them to be matching each other. Um, the angles themselves can be any angle measurement though.